Okay, it's another week. It's the Pantry Party Show. It's your host, at DJ Blattner, and we have a wonderful week ahead planned. Today's guest is at Nutritionist Sam. She wrote a book called The Sugar Shock, and we're going to talk all about it. So here we go. The Pantry Party Show starts right now. Okay, hey everybody, nice to see you. Uh, yeah, Pantry Party, here we are. Uh, I'm uh, excited to see you. There's a Felicia Stoller uh, giving us greetings from New Jersey. We've got Cooking RD, who is going to be our guest tomorrow on. This is all very exciting. How was your weekend, Sean? My weekend was fabulous. Um, hey, guess what? We have at Nutrition Sam with us today, and uh, she wrote a book called Sugar Shock. And I thought this shirt sort of looked like Sugar Shock. Uh, so let's have her in and let's get this party started. Hello, nutritionist Sam. Come on in to the Pantry Party Show. Oh, i get this ready for her. I'll get this ready for her. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the Pantry Party Show at nutritionist Sam. Thank you for having me. You do look festive. I love it. Okay, so what I thought is I was like, if somebody's gonna write a book called Sugar Shock, I better get some sort of Sugar Shock shirt on. So this is uh, in honor of you, baby. <laughs> oh, thank you. You did better than me. I just wore, you know, this hey, is like my dressed up quarantine look. <laughs> color. I love it. Well, so I'm in Chicago and you are? In Manhattan. Right, and the two of us are not in the uh, areas that have opened up uh, as no. we see in the news, we are both still very much uh, in quarantine. Oh yeah, we we are in my very uh, dim lighted New York City apartment um, with my old kitchen, and this is but this is like this is my ground zero, the kitchen. This see, is like my home these days. And I, here's what I've been loving. I mean, there's, you know, everybody's talking about, you know, this is serious times. There's, you know, horrible things going on. But, you know, looking on the silver lining of things, I actually think one of the silver linings for me is not only getting uh, the opportunity to chat with people. We don't usually chat on Instagram. I know. I love this. Um, but also, like, actually seeing people in their real elements. Like, I, I really, I find that to be very fun, especially, like, you know, it's like, oh, what does a New York Manhattan kitchen look like? You know, I think, it, I think it's all really fun. So anyway, I was writing your bio today, um, and uh, I think I first became familiar with you when you were the nutrition director at Good Housekeeping. And since then, now you write a weekly column for At Today, and you have this new book, Sugar Shock. I do, yes. All very exciting. Yes, I think that was a while ago when I was the nutrition director for Good Housekeeping. I did hold the post for a number of years. I feel like my son grew up while I was while I was there. Um, and yeah, I, I did Sugar Shock actually with Hearst. So um, Hearst is the publishing uh, house for Good Housekeeping. And this is what it looks like, yeah. everybody. Give it, put it right up and close. I love the color. I actually have mine on donation right now. Uh, on loan or whatever, uh, because there's that is, is packed with good information. Lots of like fun swaps, fun tips. I told you when I saw it, I was like, girl, this took you a long time to do. <laughs> this, um, well, so sugar, adding sugars have been like on my mind and I've, like sort of a pet peeve of mine for, I mean, I don't even want to date myself for how long that's been going on, but I will just tell you that my son is 16, and before he could even read, I taught him how to identify sugars on a cereal label um, love, when he I was like three. It's a passion, and actually, you got congratulations from Felicia and uh, also from Sarah. Oh, um, I feel like you had to have this uh, in your heart because again, you have so much information in there, and it looks like it took you so long to research all of this. That it had to have been a passion. Well, I didn't do it alone. I didn't do it alone. But um, but certainly, you know, this is something I'm really excited about. I'm really excited to share it with people because I do think that sugars are like, they cause everything from, or excessive amounts of added sugar yeah. to yeah. poor skin, poor health, um, you know, in so many different, you know, they accelerate aging and all of the chronic diseases that go with aging. I know, you have me on aging, right? I know. I have a mantra. 
age is not welcome in this body. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like we're all worried about, you know, keeping ourselves healthy and what can we do? And I feel like, um, you know, there's as people who focus on habits, there's like a number of habits that we can build to create, you know, a healthier lifestyle. It doesn't just come down to one, but I do think focusing on your added sugars, there's a real opportunity there. Um, the average American is taking in 17 teaspoons, whereas women are in the range of six teaspoons or less, and men should be in the range of nine teaspoons or less. So you could see where, where we have opportunity. Yeah, well, you know what, and a uh, couple of things. What, how old is your son? He is now 16. Oh, wow. That's exciting. I know. Well, because he's a New York kid, though, 16 doesn't necessarily mean driving for you guys. No, where is he going? First of yeah. all, where is he going right now? Well, yeah, but, right now, but... Even but yeah, general, no, like, he's, I, the weird thing about city kids is like at age 11, literally the city hands them a free Metro card and tells them to go to school by themselves. And you're like, my kid's never doing that. And then like in a week, your kid's doing that. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, so 16 year old son. Um, and then one of the things that I think is very cool is a dietitian these days coming out and saying, yes, son. You need to watch added sugar and not just like, all oh, foods fit and eat whatever. And like, I mean, no, it is all foods fit, but some fit better than others. Thank you. This is, I'm like, all foods fit, but they don't all fit equally as well. And yes, so I that's totally. My, that's mine too. Yeah, it's the, yes. And they, so I totally believe in splurging. Like I don't deny myself those life pleasures. I totally believe you can do that. But for the most part, if you can learn to do that in a healthier way, or, you know, when you're looking at added sugars, something like oat milk could have, you know, two teaspoons of added sugar in it. So you don't want to be walking away from your healthy breakfast, having a dessert load of added sugar. So that's really what the book is about. And that is really what I feel like I'm all about. It's not about never having added sugar. It's being mindful of it, keeping it at a healthy range. And then when you do enjoy it, like make it a, a memorable experience, put it on a plate. We had that conversation online the other day about the plate, because if it is something that you're doing to treat yourself, why would you scarf it down? Like it's meant to be yeah. enjoyed and in, a, in an environment that like reminds you that that was enjoyable and like a treat. Yeah, you got uh, some claps from Christy. You got a hands up from Carrie Gann. I mean, it, it, is, it is legit, right? It is one of those things where lean into it. If you're going to do it, treat yourself, as Sarah says, right? And savor it without a sigh of guilt and shame, right? No, like, exactly. Like but so I what also we... think that you can, that I'm also in favor of like creating healthier desserts. Like I know there's this weird thing, like why would you have healthier, you know, ice cream or healthier muffins or healthier baked goods? And it's like, if, if that takes the edge off and also like supplies some added bonus, um, like I believe that nutrition is empowering and can be positive. <laughs> You're gonna, dude, you're not gonna tell the queen of superfood swap that not, I'm oh, all on board. Exactly, exactly, swap, 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 exactly. Swap. We're like yes. having, the, everyone else has just invaded a, our party right now. I feel like, you know, this is a twosome, people. <laughs> really good. Well, so what would you say, like, who should read uh, Sugar Shocked? And like, what would be the main goal? Like, what would you really hope that a reader would take away from it? So I think actually, you know, most people would benefit from reading it because I think even though I think everybody wakes up in the morning with the best intentions, like everybody is trying to do well, you know, nobody is waking up being like, gee, I really want to feed my body and my children and my loved ones unhealthfully, but we rush into, we often make poorer choices because of convenience or because we're not well informed. Um, or because we grew up with certain things. So I think there's like, it can be very eye opening to have that discovery where something that you think might be healthy, for example, a plant based milk, which many of them are, it's just about reading labels. And so that's what the book really does is it does that homework for you. So if, if there's something that you like, it will show you like a healthier option to have instead, so that there's no trade off on 
you know, enjoying that item or your enjoyment or what you're feeding your family, but you're just doing it in a healthier way. And we kind of train you how to do that. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Like when I was thinking like, okay, you know, what do you really get out of this? It's like, yeah, somebody did all the sleuthing and detective work and sort of you get to sit back and sort of think, oh, you know, that's an interesting, oh, yes. that's a cool brand or whatever. So anyway, I think it's great. And while I have somebody who is so like entrenched in the sugar world, I mean, I would, even though it's open to really, you know, Pantry Party Show can be any inspiration you want to give. I would love to either, um, you know, see what you've got going on there in your pantry, but also like in particular about like tips, tricks, strategies that you have really loved to keep your sugar low. Yes. So it's so funny. We're so on the same page because I actually, so in a New York City apartment, things are kind of spread about. So I actually like set up a fake pantry right here so Perfect. I could show you some things. I love but that. I think, Welcome to the pantry party show. Welcome to the, it's my counter. Um, <laughs> but I think sometimes like spices, people forget like spices can add a, a hint of sweetness, especially things like cinnamon. Um, I have uh, ginger, cardamom are some of my favorites for just like adding a hint of sweetness. Um, I think these, especially like cinnamon and cardamom work really well even in coffee. So when you're trying to kind of wean yourself off of those added sugars, those are some um, of the things that you can add, but you can also add them to like anything that you want to sweeten up. I even add cinnamon um, to like banana slices sometimes or sliced apples or sliced pears because it just kind of like next levels the flavor. Yeah, and I it's so that's, easy. That's a good uh, example. Because, you know, I have heard the, and I do teach the whole idea of cinnamon and coffee or whatever. But I also like the reminder of like cardamom and ginger. And I like the idea of enjoying fruit as like that natural sweetness. But it's like, okay, come on, Vaughn. You know, but like, hey, the next level is like, put some ginger on that pear slice. Yeah, like put just take it, like just, banana. right. Like make it more special. I also, um, Vanilla extract is a big one because if you think about what's so delicious about vanilla ice cream, it's the vanilla flavor. And so this is like reminiscent of that. And you can add this to, um, you know, any, you can add it to your yogurt um, along with like some spices to sort of up the sweetness oh, without like adding it. sugar. Uh, you have a good question. Felicia says, does your book address non-nutritive high intensity sweeteners? non-nutritive high intensity sweeteners we do touch on it a little bit um just in terms of the fda says they are safe um i don't think that they actually do your body any favors other than potentially weaning you off of a sugar um and the carbohydrate from that sugar for people who need to reduce their carbohydrate load um but i my preference is for the naturally based sweetener. So like a stevia or a monk fruit extract or erythritol. Um, but I do think that those can be very effective at, like I said, kind of weaning you off or like, you know, doing it with slightly less sugar, knowing that sugar is coming from all these other sources. Um, so that's how we address it in the book. And actually one of the things that I made um, are these little avocado truffles with- Wait a second, um, hold up, hold up. Did you make a food prop for the Pantry Party Show? I did. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so those um, are made in avocado? They're avocado truffles. Um, and actually I saw the recipe in Food and Nutrition Magazine a while back and I've been making them ever since because literally, you guys, it is two ingredients. It is mashed avocado, one mashed avocado to one half cup chocolate chips. Um, and I, I calculated the recipe has six grams of added sugar per truffle. Um, but I actually used, you know, these Lily's um, stevia sweetened chocolate chips so that they are zero grams of added sugar. Um, and then I used actually like a crushed up rice cake to put like some crunch in it. Um, and I store these in the freezer so that you, when you take them out, you need about 10 minutes to thaw them. And I think that's like that nice natural pause so that you can like enjoy it more memorably. I like that, a natural pause, a nice natural pause. You've got uh, hearts, hearts were coming, the rock, oh. you had me at truffle. 
Okay, so <laughs> this is what we're talking. So you get a regular ripe, nice avocado, and you put a half of a cup of melted chocolate chips. Melted chocolate chips, which I just do in my microwave. Every 30 seconds, you just stir them up. Um, and it usually okay. takes about a minute. I don't know why sometimes it takes a little longer. <laughs> okay, so you're stirring it, you do that. You mix those two things together. And then like with a scoop or a spoon or whatever, you make like little dollops on a parchment lined. Uh, yeah, so I egg. chill it first. You could chill it quickly in the freezer or um, I tried it quickly over the weekend. It only needed about five minutes of chill, whereas um, I've chilled it longer other times. And then you scoop them out, put them on a parchment lined paper, and um, I s stick them back in the fridge for that day. And then I freeze them in a separate container um, so that, again, like, well, first of all, because I made a bunch, uh, because every time I cook, I think I should be making more so that I reduce my hassle down the line. Yes. Yes. And second of all, um, I like having them in my freezer. And then when I want like something sweet, I have something, but again, like with that natural built-in pause, um, cause I wait for it to kind of get to the right temperature. Oh my gosh, I think I actually am tearing up. <laughs> I'm not serious, I think I'm tearing up. I love this, okay, I love it for so many reasons, right? One, this natural pause is like a beautiful, I find that to be such a beautiful thing. Taking that beats to really mean it. I, you know, I call it own your, food, right? Own it like a boss. Exactly. Right? Like own it, eat it, enjoy it, move on. Boss. Um, so I love that. I love that it's two ingredients. I love that you can lean into whatever chocolate chips you like. So it's like, yeah. you know, or whatever you have on hand or whatever. I think that's great. You know, what is the craziest thing that I, well, maybe it's not crazy to you, but it was crazy to me is that I learned from TikTok that you can freeze a whole avocado and I just tried it last night. I'm going to post in the stories uh, of my Instagram today how it turned out. But here's the spoiler alert. It turned out freaking amazing. Oh, okay. Because now my mind is blown. Um, and I'm going to need that because I bought six avocados this weekend. <laughs> and I, was, I accidentally overdid it. And I thought I'm actually out of like lemons and stuff. And so you usually need citrus to make it last so this is where i'm i cannot wait for this tip i mean i cannot but i can't believe it now here's here's what i will say in all fairness is the texture as we know anytime something okay we got the rock girl having a mind blown but like so ice crystals form in something and toughens it up that's why when you freeze tofu it is amazing because it gets less spongy and more tough like a cotton chicken cutlet so freezing, you can really use to your advantage. In an avocado situation where you're freezing and it's forming those ice crystals, what has happened is the knowledge that it won't be a beautiful slice on a hamburger, for example. It's more But I use them in my smoothies, so it's perfect. Yep, it's for smoothies. It's for um, these bites. It would be perfect in your bites. And then like guacamole. So it's great for anything that's going to be smushed up. Um, let me ask you this about those, uh, the bites. I love that outside coating because the texture to me is going to be a big thing. I think that's a cool idea to do crushed up like rice cake or um, nuts. You could like do coconut or whatever. totally. Last time I did coconut and I did little um, like buck, buckwheat, like nibbles. Um, but you could do crushed up cereal. You could do crushed up nuts or seeds. Oh, yeah. I think crushed it's like. Nuts. Yeah, I think it's just like how you want to play around in the kitchen or what ingredients like to me a pet peeve is like that bottom of the rice cake package that's always like crumbs and you feel like you're just like wasting food. So I always like have to figure out what to do with that like bottom of the package stuff. So I that's I save it for things like that or like to put punch in a salad. Okay. Two things. Abby Siegel says, girl, I can bring you some lemons. So, <laughs> so you know, you've got lemons at your fingertips if you need them. Um, and for me, I don't eat rice cakes all that often. How do you eat them? Okay, so one of the other things I do is um, for one of the, my favorite ways to reduce sugar is to use like frozen fruit. And when you thaw it out in the microwave, it gets like nice and juicy. So strawberries, when you th thaw them, they release their juices and then you mash them and it's a great like toast topper or rice cake topper. So I use the or pancake syrup or pancake. Yeah. I use them all the time on pancakes. Um, 
And so I use them, I use uh, rice cakes, I use the rice cake thins, and I'll put some nut butter and some mashed fruit, and that will be like a snack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, you know what, I think my situation is, back in the day, they had this sort of like cottage cheese, rice cake, cabbage soup, very diet vibes in my mind. Yeah, I think it's all about the carrier. Yes, you're right. You're right. It's yeah, if you're using it because you're like this restricted dieter and cracking off dry, disgusting pieces of rice cake, not good. If you're using no. it as like a peanut butter and jelly phenomenon, I love it. Yes. That. I think I'm with you. I feel like we're very in sync on that. Like your food has to be fun. There always has to be like some element of fun. And some of that is bringing like texture, flavor. You know, for me, I like like the crunch of a rice cake. That's what I really like yeah. about it. So that's what I like um, for peanut butter and like my makeshift jelly over there. Um, and nut butters are actually, nuts and nut butters, toasted nuts in particular, are also another way to, they kind of get like a little sweetness um, without added sugar if you're buying one that doesn't have added sugar. So I like that as another trick. You know, they bring you that like, we're really getting the tricks here. So this is uh, the, the herbs, well, they're spices. So the spices like ginger, cardamom, cinnamon, and then also vanilla. I feel like that's yep. a good tip. Then using um, things like frozen fruit that you could either have just as a treat and natural sweet on your own or like mash up like a jelly or a syrup. Um, and then uh, what was your next one? Um, we talked oh, about nut nuts and nut butters. Nut yep. butters. That's true because think about it. Like when you're wanting something after a meal that's like, oh, I just, I'm a little peckish. I need something sweet. Even just a little dollop of like almond butter or peanut butter definitely has a spot. And then I love the idea of making your own, what do you call those balls, by the way? Um, avocado chocolate truffles or like if I'm oh. giving them to my son, I just call them chocolate truffles. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like not like fully that. on He's not 100% on board with this yet because, um, well, he he's eaten like avocado mousse and stuff like that. But the truth is, um, you know, he's a teenager and he's eating other stuff. <laughs> exactly. Okay, I like avocado chocolate truffles and when need be, just chocolate truffles. <laughs> it's all in the marketing, Don. <laughs> oh, is its it, is it not, though? Seriously, the other day, I oh, I have a good meal on my meal plan next week. And I was going to call it something. And it was like, that sounds like boring. I forget. It was like a chickpea pancake dinner or something. I was like, this is horrible. And then I was like, wait a second. I just need to use the word flatbread here and everything will change. Do you and do so that now, with chickpea flour? Yeah. So that's like one plan. of our favorite dinners. I, who knew? But here's, here's the truth. Would I really want to eat a chickpea pancake or would I rather eat a chickpea flatbread? flatbread and sometimes right. I market it as a gluten-free flatbread or a <laughs> high protein flatbread or a high protein high fiber flatbread but it's like two ingredients chickpea flour and water and some spices yeah. it's the easiest thing yeah. it is the easiest thing so I'm leaning into that that but that's next week I have to okay some, some other no things spoilers. I'm planning um, is there any other guru crazy tricks that you have behind you in your makeshift uh, pantry? In my makeshift pantry? Um, yeah. No, I just have like my chopped nuts um, that. that I buy already chopped. I guess that's like my other thing is I am, uh, some people call it a lazy cook. I call it an efficient cook um, because I, I feel like that's more empowering to me. I don't want to feel lazy. I want to feel smart about the way I'm spending my time. Um, and so for things like that, I delegate that to the elves um, in the manufacturing plant who are slicing and chopping nuts. Um, I don't, I typically don't do that myself. I, you know what, it is true. I mean, we did immediately connect when we met each other, but I will tell you the more we talk, the more I'm like, yes, because I am, because every time I tell someone I like bottled salad dressing, they're like, girl, you could just make it. And I'm like, you know what? But why not just have it already made? Already <laughs> made? It's like hummus. Yeah. Like, is it, you know, is it a touch better if, if it's being made by scratch? And yes, is it super easy? Of course it is. But there's extra dishes and extra time involved. And guess who's got it 
going really well. Lots of brands are doing great things with hummus. So I feel like I'm going to support them. <laughs> well, hey, I'm going to do something different. Okay, Carrie Gans is on. Carrie Gans, uh, what did you say? She says, I love when you clarify that. What does that mean? Uh, and then number two, what clarify what? And number two, Kara Gans is a hummus, store-bought hummus queen. She puts it in everything. So basically, if you're like, hmm, what should I do here? Her answer is to put hummus on it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and an egg. Oh, oh, God, please excuse me. You're absolutely right. It's, it's hummus <laughs> and an egg, and then you're, you can live Kara Gans' life. Um, oh, efficiency, not lazy. Oh, I see. It is, uh, it is interesting because I do use the word lazy a lot because I think it's a funny word, but, it I is. but I do think that saying efficient is probably for most people seems a little more positive. <laughs> I think also, um, I feel like there's been like sort of a shift in um, health and wellness culture where um, we have to be really mindful of the words that we use and the emotions that they might trigger around eating. Um, so for example, like I, I, my clients will often talk about like the cheat meals that they've had. And I remind them like, you're not betraying yourself. Like let's rewind that. Um, and so one of my clients renamed it a break meal which I actually thought is like a very nice way to put it because she's not cheating on herself. She's just going for a little break. And then that also self implies that it's not like a total detour. It's, you know, you're coming back. Yeah. I, you, you have hit something for me that is huge is words matter. And it matters even in your inner dialogue that you are not saying out loud and so i think i think that is a very very good reminder of word choice matters so all right now let me tell you i feel like i that solution of all those things is great but i really feel mostly that i am inspired to make this two ingredient avocado chocolate trouble like i am I, I'm dying to make it right now. I can't even tell you how excited. I can't. Oh, will you tag me if you make it and take oh, a picture? Because yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm so excited about this. Well, this is the funny part of it is like Pantry Party Show. We're always like, hey, we're spreading inspiration all around for meals. But in the end, it's me who's getting like super <laughs> inspired by everybody who comes on. I think this is so, 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 so great. And so at Nutritionist Sam, if people yeah. want more of your uh, sugar hacks and sugar shock tricks, where can they go to get more of you? Um, so I'm at Nutritionist Sam on Instagram. I always share like little uh, lifestyle. I'm really all about like that time-saving efficiency, you know, make it less work in the kitchen, um, but make it equally as tasty and enjoyable. Um, so that's where I am. And I have, you know, Aww. I did a disco ball for that efficiency, making it easy. Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, and show the book again. I love it. It's Sugar so Shock beautiful. on Amazon. You can pre-order it. It's uh, it was supposed to come out this month. It's coming out in September instead. So you'll have to wait, but that's okay. Um, yep. And uh, like I said, I write a lot on the, for today's show on today.com. I love you. And Nutritionist Sam, thank you for these amazing sugar tips and for my inspiration of my avocado chocolate troubles. Um, thank you for uh, inviting me to the party and for showing up so spirited and in your sugar shock gear. I love you. Love you. Bye, Nutritionist Sam. Bye. Bye. And that was another successful episode of the Pantry Party Show with at Nutritionist Sam, the author of Sugar Shock. It is available for pre-sale now. You want to see more of her, go to her Instagram account at Nutritionist Sam. And if you weren't inspired to go make those two ingredient avocado and chocolate truffles, I don't know what's going on in your head. Like, these are amazing. Okay, so tomorrow, guess what? Uh, I have a very special guest lined up for us. Um, let's just say, here's the spoiler alert. Chacos. Chacos, chacos, that's tomorrow. So thanks for joining the Pantry Party Show with your host, at me, at DJ Blattner. And good news is not only are the episodes on YouTube, but over the weekend, this chica got to work and got all the episodes up on her IGTV. So wondering what has happened in the last 
30 plus episodes of the pantry party wonder no more because they're on my igtv all right thanks for joining the pantry party show i will see you here tomorrow and until next time wishing you high immunity vibes big love and lots and lots of kisses